Today we got one of the all-time greats, also a good friend of ours, came up in amateurs with, with Jeremy. We have the defensive master, the one, the only, Winky Wright. Let's get right into this. There he is. What's up? What's up? You got some powder on your chin right here. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, that's old age. <laughs> Wait, what are you? How old are you? You older than me? I'm 50. I don't know why are you. Yeah, you, you older than me. You're 50. <laughs> are you turning um, 50? Oh, no, I'm 50. No, you 50. 50 or you're 51 in August? I'm 50 in August. Oh, so you're still 49. All right, all right. Yeah, I'll be 51 in November. November what? 26. All right, huh. November. November's good people. Word. What, November, yeah? So where are you at? Florida? Yeah, I'm in Florida, man. I see you, you golfing a lot, man. Yeah, I was just moving around. I don't, I don't really post that much, man. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'll be chilling, you know, just trying to do some other things, you know. You've been playing golf a lot, right? Huh? You've been playing golf a lot. Not, not lately, man. I need to get back out there, you know what I'm saying? I, my game, I fell off for a while, so dude's been whooping up on me. So now I got to <laughs> I gotta recover, you know, get my game right, but I'm coming back. I saw you with was it Charles Ball. <laughs> Oh yeah, that yeah yeah that was that was old that was old old thing I had to put that out there on Charles. <laughs> to request, <laughs> yeah, I got a few of them dudes, man. I, I beat when my game was right. I had I got a few people want. that I knocked off. You know, I had to get some all the things on my golf. Please, guys, record, subscribe you know I mean? and follow to our YouTube <laughs> yeah. channel. Do you find golf at at all <laughs> simple like any part of it? Not at all. It's golf. It's game. It's fun. You know what I'm saying. Boxing is 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 not a game, but it's fun. But it's it's it's, it's so competitive, and and like I said, it's not a game. You can get hurt in boxing. You know what I'm saying? You play basketball, you play golf, you play football. You don't play boxing. You don't play boxing. That's exactly right. <laughs> you had those. Have you, have you uh have you felt that that boxing has made you a whole lot calmer as you got older? Oh, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Even even when I was younger, you know, boxing. You know, like I said, we train every day. We box every day. We, you know, we throw punches. We get people to hit us. We hit people. So, you know, our our uh, our attitude and, and our uh, temper was was maintained very well because of that. You know what I'm saying? And someone else would be quick to want to snap off and fight somebody, and we'd be like, you know what? It ain't worth it. Unless you know, unless they do something to us, or you know, push it to that limit. But more and often, you just like let it go. Well, let me ask you this, Wayne. Do you mm -hmm. think, do you believe that there's cold anger or do you think that anger has no place? No Say that again. You, you broke up. Do you believe that uh, that somebody could have controlled anger, a fighter, in the ring? Or do you think that there's no place for anger at all in the ring? Oh, you definitely got control anger. You definitely got control anger. You you know, anger give you that, 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 that drive to inflict pain. But to control it is 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 being able to set someone up and, and finish him. Jeremy got a good, you know, he got that good power. So that was his thing, you know. He going in and try to knock your head off me. You know, I can smile at you and just try to beat you up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My, that's just how I like to do it. Hey, but you know, true, true. Knocking somebody out is far better for the opponent than to get beat oh. up. Oh, most definitely. I tell them all the time. I said, you'd have rather for me to knock you out than beat you up because that's a lot of pain I'm inflicting on you for 12 rounds. And you might be like, well, I, I survived. I survived. But, yeah, you survived a whooping. That's like, it. you know, you get that knockout. Okay, boom, he caught me. Okay, that way he didn't catch me with that shot. Maybe I could have won. But if I continuously beat you round by round and I'm inflicting pain, you gonna it's going to be a long recovery. Of, 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 of everybody you fought, who did you want to beat up the most? Who did you really want to – Whoop their ass for the whole twelve. Bernard Hopkins. <laughs> Why? Just because he was just talking so much trash, and it was just like, man, you must be. I'm about to beat the brakes off you. <laughs> so you know what I mean? It, huh? How, how tall is Hopkins? How, how tall are you? I'm five ten. He I, he may be. I don't know six feet. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I met him one time, so I can't really like. Yeah, be... yeah, he a little bit taller than me. He ain't much taller than me, you know. How do you feel fighting guys taller than you? Uh, when I was younger, I loved fighting guys taller than me because 
you know, they had to reach for me. And I could back then, you know, my I had a whole different style. So I, I, I stuck and moved and slip shots and counter, you know, but as I got older and, and started more, you know, standing in the pocket and catching punches, you know, I liked it to fight the shorter guys, you know what I'm saying? Because they right there. <laughs> I ain't got to go looking for them. Yeah, yeah. I don't realize that, that you started – the cover up style for what the the Vargas, Vargas. yeah 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 I, and I didn't I didn't I didn't practice that I was just that day of the fight going into the ring it just happened that you know my intentions with the box Vargas go out there stick a jab stick a move but you know he, he all the talking and all that I was just like you know what I'm gonna give it hurt this kid you know we going I want to see what you got so you know he was 17 over no, 17 knockout so I said okay I want to see and show me show me what you what everybody else see and that's what I did went at him. At that Vargas fight, what was your record? I was, uh, I think I was 25 and, no, I, I might have been a little bit more than 25. I was like, I don't know. I know I was like 20-something, 20 25, 27, and, and maybe two because I lost to uh, Julio Cesar Vasquez, and then I think they robbed me uh, in, uh, for, for Harry Simon. So that right there, that's when I came back to the, to the state. So, yeah, I had two losses. So I'm like 27 and old, something like that. People 27 don't, to 2. People don't realize, yeah. how long were you fighting in Europe? Oh, shit. I was fighting in Europe. I went to Europe on my, I think, my 12th fight. And, shit, I didn't come back until my, shit, maybe my 27th fight, 28th fight. So, obviously, you enjoyed fighting in Europe, yeah? I'll say that again? You en You enjoyed fighting in Europe? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it, but, you know, uh, it was it was an end to a mean, you know what I'm saying? I knew that because you got to realize when I was coming up, you know, because my amateur background wasn't as long, you know, they didn't want to give me the uh, the recognition to, 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 to get on the networks or anything like that. So, you know, uh, it was like, okay, I got to go over here to get, get my status. I got to go over here to get ranked. See, back in the days, you had to be ranked to get a, really uh, a championship fight. You got to be in the top 10. And then, you know, for me, being, being how young and how quick I got there, you know, I was 25 and 0 with, with like 14 knockouts, I think. And then, I, I, you know, I was number one across the board. So I was number one for everybody, WBC, WBA, and IBF. So then was the majors at that time. So, you know, we got that full belt era now. But, you know, we, the WBO was there, but it wasn't. You know, it was it was a title, it was a world title, but they didn't consider it the world title. They said the three main belts was what they considered, and then so you know, it was just like okay, I was number one for all of them, and then when I lost the fast kids, I had they pushed me back up to like seven to ten, but then I had to beat my way back down, and that's what I did. I beat my way back down, beat my way back down, and then when I got my title shot again, I was number one. So that's what happened. Every time I get a title shot, I had to become number one. And you, what what? kind of showed you to the world was was the most fight, right? Uh, Vargas fight kind of showed the world who I was because everybody was thinking about this young phenomenon and he knocking everybody out and blah, blah, blah. And then when I stepped on that and then people were like, oh, man, this guy, this guy can fight, blah, blah, blah. Then they started doing research on it. And then the people that knew me, the people that in boxing knew that I could fight. <laughs> but the people in boxing knew I could fight. But the people who didn't know you know, only they heard the name, but they didn't know who the face was. Like, if we, back in the day, you would look into the uh, Rain magazine and you would see, you know, Winky Wright right there. And you start noticing I became number six, number five, number one, you know, champion. So I'm, I'm number one. Back then, you could look at all the divisions, I mean, all the different belts, and I'm like number one, number two. You know what I'm saying? So people knew the name, but they didn't know the face. So finally, when I did get my chance to come back to the U.S. and I got that Vargas fight, then I put a face to the name for the people. And then, you know, again, once I, I went back to number one, then I, I won my first, I won the WB, I think, the, what was it? Yeah, the WBC first, WBA, WBC first yeah, against, uh, against uh, what's his name? Uh, was it WB? IBF, it was IBF, I'm sorry. IBF, I think, against, uh, what's the kid name from, from New York? Uh, Which mm -hmm. one? Uh, his name is, uh, I beat him in, in California. Oh, I, Mullings. No, 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 I keep my I beat Keith Mullins. That was uh, before World Title. Yeah, yeah. Keith Mullins was a tough little kid, you know. 
you gotta look. If you really look who I fought, man, I was fighting all the people that the, the big names didn't want to fight. I know. You no, know, I and I was beating them. And I had to, like I had like the people could say what they want about Bronco McCall. At that time, Bronco was a bad boy. Bronco was beating everybody. Nobody wanted to fight that white boy. You know, and I always we still friends to this day. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, we talked to him too. And and you fought him three times, right? Yeah, yeah, I fought him three times. Fought him the first time his hometown, then he wanted to rematch it. I beat him again. And then later nobody wanted to fight me still. So it was like, okay, we fight again. So it was just but like I said, I respect his heart, man. He's a good kid, good dude, man. And like and, and with Shane Mosley, people, you know, people always ask what what I think about Shane. I think Shane is a great fighter, man. Great, you know, great competitor. Uh you know, he want, he he got that uh that will to be great, and and that's what made him so exciting. He got a big punch, quick hands, and I'm glad I got a chance to fight. I mean, I, that fight, man, people were just like shocked because Shane Mosley was undefeated, right? You gave him his first loss. Yeah, yeah I, no, no, I think Vernon did. I think Vernon beat him first. Uh, yeah, yeah, Vernon, <coughs> Vernon, Vernon, Vernon Forrest beat him first because he was oh, at 47, he... and then he moved up to 54, won the belts at 54. Uh, hey, remember when they fought for uh, when when they fought in the amateurs? No, so so listen, you gotta remember now. I I was on the amateur. I started boxing in '88, and I turned pro in '90. So when I came, when I started boxing in '88, I got to the I got to the National Golden Glove that that same year, I think. And then uh then the next year, you know, I went again, and then that's when I seen them do it, and I seen I seen all y'all. Then that's when I started being on the team, and I started being on the team with y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a good time hanging out in Colorado, huh? I think I met you when I was like sixteen. Yeah, we was in Colorado. You uh, you was knocking niggas. I said, "This dude crazy. This dude ain't playing." <laughs> I'm serious, man. I'm like, look, I'm gonna be one hundred with it. I said, "This dude knocking cats out." You know, what I'm saying light skinned dude. You know, <laughs> the dude coming to fight. You know, he did. I gotta give him his props. You know what I'm saying? So, I got a question. Ra Raul Marquez just asked this. I think it's a good question. Why didn't you wait for the '92 Olympics? Why didn't I wait tonight? Because okay, they're good, good question. So I started boxing in eighty eight. You gotta remember. So now, 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 in 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 eighty nine, I'm I done went overseas. I done fought a few times. I don't I don't, But I won. I won the nineteen. I won the nineteen ninety U S Olympic festival. I won the gold medal. So back then, he he know what I'm talking about. The, the U S Olympic festival was a big thing. So I had I had me. It was me. It was uh. It was little Stevie Johnson. Cause I lost to Stevie Johnson in the championships, so I was like, "Okay, I, I want to fight him again." You know what I'm saying? A little shorter, which he what, just threw a lot of little punch. Wink. What weight were you as an amateur? I was 139. I was 139. So you know what I'm saying? So I was like, "Okay." So, 439 was competition, bro. Yeah, I had, I had, yeah, I had. We had some tough little little. Teron Millet. Teron Millet was one of the little tough dudes. I had, he had a bunch of people, man. So I was like, man, I want to. I got, I got, you know what I'm saying? So when I did, when I did fight the championship, I, so we had, you had four fights. You had the East, South, East, Northwest. So I was one of them. And then uh, I had, I had Stevie Carl, I mean, little Stevie Johnson. And then uh, it was uh, Hector Cologne. And I think it was somebody else. So I was like the, the, the higher up ranked out all of them. So I knocked off, I knocked off Hector Cologne the first day. And then me and Stevie had to do the championship. And you know, just box him. He was trying to get in the by just keeping him all over the jab. Pop, 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 pop. Mm -hmm. Combinations. And once I won that, so I'm saying I'm like, they supposed to give me my I supposed to give me a, at least a, a goodwill game trial. They didn't even they I so you know, back then I was like, okay, so everybody else told me, yeah, we get to go to the goodwill games trial because goodwill games was coming up and then nine two Olympics. So it was like, you know, and I was like, okay, where, where the hell my trial at? You know what I'm saying? Back then, I, that's when they started giving out that money. You know what I'm saying? That that uh, I forgot what they call oh. that shit. Yeah, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. They started, so they're giving out that money. So I'm like, man, okay, uh, my time now. Shit, I'm, I beat the number one and the number four, so I got to be right there. They's like, well, you ain't you ain't got enough spirit. I said, I done fought overseas. I beat these dudes. Why? You know, they like, you ain't got enough spirit. I said, you know, man, fuck amateur. I said, fuck boxing. So that's what happened. I was like, I was, I was done with boxing. And I never, I never wanted to box to be a professional or, or to be a world. I was just doing it just for fun because I, I moved from Florida to D.C. And I always liked to fight. I always liked the body punch. And I was just like, you know what? Man, I want always want to box. I love Sugar Ray Leonard, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna try it. And then that's when I tried it. So I went to the gym in '88, turned pro in '90. So how old? Right. How old were you when you left Florida for DC? When I left DC for Florida, I oh, was uh, oh yeah, right, I was, I was 16. I just turned 16. Okay, so, so do I, you can 
yourself a Florida or a DC guy? Like what, what had more impact on you? Say that again. Do you consider yourself a Florida guy or a DC guy? Like which, which place had more impact? Both. I got I both. I represent for both. You know what I'm saying? DC is hometown. Grew up. They taught me how to be me. Florida, you know, show the love, show the support, you know, when I was when I was coming up in boxing and I was getting ranked in this and that, then I became a champion. Everybody's like, you need to move to a big city. You need to do this because, you know, it's more of this. Man, I ain't moving nowhere, man. I'm, everybody going to come here. You know, I'm, I'm here. And I love it. And I, to this day, I love it. You know what I'm saying? They it, they show love. It's just, it's just like that. The big city is a little different. You know, I got big respect in big city, but I just love Florida. So, so you well, said you didn't want to get a fighter. What, what part of Florida are you in? I'm in St. Pete. I'm in St. Petersburg by Tampa. You know, That's, so uh, Roy Jones area, right? No, no, no. Roy in Pensacola. Roy like way in the way in the peninsula. He in the corner, like going towards Louisiana and all that. But That's we, more. yeah, we Central Florida, right? We're in the West Coast of Central Florida. Me, Tava, you know, Jeff Lacey, Keith Thurman. See, Keith Thurman, Jeff. Lacey. So that's how. What about um? That work. What about Nate Campbell? Yeah, little Nate down this way too. I like little Nate. That's cool, little, little Nate. So I was, I, I, so I was. They, they was all coming up in the amateur when I was pro and this and that. And I, man, I always, I like Nate. Nate hustle. Uh, I went to when wait, Nate won his championship and uh, he won that in in, in, in uh, Mexico or something. I was dead. So I, you know, Nate, little Nate, a bad little dude, man. I like so, him. So let me ask you this, Wink. You said you didn't want to keep fighting. What would you have done? Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, what God got for you, nobody can take away. <laughs> I not, seriously, I never knew I would listen, man. You gotta think of I'm I'm I just thought but I like boxing. I just knew I can do it, but I never thought I'd be a professional boxer. Never thought I'd be a world champion. It just you know, I just kept training and and I, I loved it more and more. The more I trained, the more I loved it, the more I wanted to do it. And then the, it got more challenging. Now I gotta be this person. So you know what I'm saying? I beat a lot of a lot of cats that didn't get their chance because I stopped them. You know what I'm saying? You had the the uh the uh, what's his name? Marshall. I fought. Uh, what's his name from New York? Sure, they could fight. I fought. I fought a lot of dudes that were that were undefeated. I fought a lot of them on contenders. You look at my champions, my belts. I fought everybody that was number one. I wasn't just picking people number ten, number seven, nah, because nobody wanted to fight me. So I I had to let get my mandatory. I was just fighting my mandatory. Knock them off. Knock them off. Knock them off. I'll tell you, man. My favorite fight of yours to watch, which I enjoyed every fucking second, was when you fought Trinidad. I love it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people love it because they just expected Tito just to walk through me. But Tito, a great dude, man. You know what I'm saying? We had we we had a great press conference and we were friends. My homeboy named Damon Ramirez, God bless him. You know what I'm saying? That's who introduced me to Tito before we even was going to fight. And then uh, you know, they, they the fight came about, and you know what I'm saying? It was it was good. It was a whole good press tour. Everything was great, man. And uh, like I said. You know, it was just my night. Sometimes, you know, when 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 it's your time, can't nobody stop it. And that was just my time. I was ready for it. I knew what I had to do. I knew the I knew the odds was against me. And that's when I'm a better fighter. When 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 people expect me not to do it, that's when I I can do it because I train harder. And it just it just make it worth it. Sometimes when you supposed to win, you don't put in the sweat and the equity like you need to, and you take people lightly, and shit happen. You know, uh, when you fought Trinidad. At your peak, right? Mm -hmm. You agree? Right, I am. You cut well, out Tito, I, I want to say I, I was that I peaked that night. I peaked that night, but but what I'm saying, you gotta remember, I'm I'm fighting these fights, and I'm all I'm thirty something years old, 30, 35, 36, You know, I'm I ain't a, I ain't a spring chicken. So my 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 spring chicken, they wasn't you know I wasn't getting it. I wasn't being able to being shown. You know what I'm saying? So. I had to do a lot of these fights when I'm older. Yeah, yeah, but you—I mean, <clears throat> I think I think that 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 lends to being more mature in the ring and being and 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 knowing what to do later in the round rather than jumping on somebody straight away. Yeah, I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. It, it all pays a part. Like I said, I'm I'm just blessed and I'm <clears throat> happy that, like I said, my fans, you know. Really, really, really kept me focused. Uh, 
you know, a lot of time when they robbed me, it was like, you know, because a lot of, I got robbed a lot, you know what I'm saying, especially yeah. in the big fight. So, so for that to happen and then you want to continue to fight, you know, it got to be in you that, that you want to prove somebody wrong. And I always want to prove people wrong. And I was always fighting, you know, I was raised by my grandmother. And so I always wanted to, to give my grandma everything that she wanted. And I always wanted to let her, 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 my grandmother know that her baby can whoop anybody. You know what I'm saying? At that time, that's how I felt. I felt like, look, you get in the ring with her, I ain't got to be arguing with you. I ain't got to be mad with you, but I'm going to beat you. And that's how I was. <laughs> Did, did you were, were you able to give your grandmother a better life? Yeah, 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 but yeah, yo, yeah, yeah. I I gave her everything she wanted, but she didn't want too much. See, that's that's one good humbling thing. You know what I'm saying? It's your your your, your grandparents. They don't. It's like, listen, baby, just just enjoy yourself. Just you know, give me what what you can or what you want. And I bought a cars. I asked to buy a new house. She didn't want to shoot her love her neighbors and all that. So I paid the house off. And like I said, she didn't have to worry. But, you know, it was more of just because she did everything for me. You know what I'm saying? It was just like a blessing that, you know, my grandma was there. And I, I love being raised by her. My mom's still around, too. So I, me and my mom got a great connection. But my mother was young when she had me. My mother was like 16. So my grandmother raised me. So I was raised with my uncles and aunts. But they was like my brothers and sisters. So I'm an only child, but it seemed like I had brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? Family, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, you know, from... I'm an only child, too. Um, yeah, yeah. So I know what that's like. I was going to ask you, um, who was the hardest, who had the heaviest hands of anybody you ever That's what I, people ask me all the time. I can't really say because I fought some cats that, you know what I'm saying, that nobody really know and, you know, may hit, hit hard than a motherfucker. But it's just the point, that, could they catch me? You know, the, the ones that y'all know that got good heavy hands, I would say, Shane got heavy hands. Shane got heavy hands, but I just felt he couldn't hurt me. I just felt to myself that I was so and so in shape, and I was so in my mind that, you know, I was unstoppable. That's why I dropped my hands and all of that stuff and let him hit me just to show him that you can't hurt me because tonight, my night, ain't nothing going to stop me tonight. So that's that's what that. But Shane, Shane a good puncher. Uh, that's pretty much – even when I – my last fight when I got knocked down by Lord little kid Chocolate, you know, he's not a big puncher. He he just caught me moving back. He just caught me a perfect shot, but he, it wasn't it wasn't a day shot, huh? He's a big guy, though. So, like, did you yeah, yeah, but but, not, but, 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 but the punches wasn't hard. I could just, It was just like I just couldn't get off, you know. When you know when your time – when you can't get off, I'm like, I see the puncher, but that tip of a second when I want to throw it, I can't throw it. And, and when you throw it, it's too late now. So I'm like, okay, so this one of them nights. Nice. So you, you were talking about how you put your hands down. I think people don't really talk about that enough with you. You had a game that was crazy. You were getting people's – I mean, you would break their spirit with smiling oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, listen. You know, the the, 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 the worst thing you could do to a puncher or, or somebody who think they're a puncher is, is take their punch and go to them and act like it don't hurt. Well, a lot of times you got to realize they only hit my arm. It looked like they doing it, but they only hit my arm, so it ain't hurting. So I'm really telling them, oh, that's all you, I'm talking this, that's all you got? Come on, man, you got to hit harder than that. You know, so so now they're even trying harder now. And, and that jab is, that jab is, my jab is like a right hand. People can say what they want. I tell people all the time, they say, well, Winky, you ain't no, you ain't no big punch. You ain't. I say, how many people you saw rushing at me? Y'all can tell me right now, go ahead, I'll wait. <laughs> yeah so so i can punch it was that i didn't go for the knockout shots it was more i could beat you up i could hit you with this jab constantly break your face bust your nose up bust your lip and get your i love the body i used to tear people up to the body so it was like that and then you know it just went to the point to where like okay shit i look like i may just be going 12 rounds i'm just gonna do what i gotta do do your work do your work. what do you what do you so what do you spend your days doing now Oh man, now I'm just I just golf. Like he said, I golf. Uh I got a construction company. Me and me and some fellas, we uh we, we got us a construction company down here. So, you know, I just do that. Just what do you, just you guys what? Build? houses, yeah. houses, apartments, we you know what I'm saying, whatever. You know, it's just new home. We build new home, you know. We started renovating a few, but then jumped right into the new home. Now we're trying to build, you know, apartments, complexes, and all that. It just, you know, with this, uh, with this COVID shit, kind of fucked up a lot of shit. But it's coming back. You know, it's the, yeah. the market is dang crazy down here. So you know what I'm saying? We're, um, back the market. Where I live. So, oh, well, you in Cali, ain't you? I'm in L.A. Yeah, L.A. But L.A. Man, they say L.A. crazy right now, man. I, I'm in. Huh? I'm in in Brooklyn, 
Same shit. He's in Brooklyn. Same shit, dude. At Los Angeles, you uh, two bedroom, one bathroom house in the hood, eight hundred thousand dollars. That's I, I would have been left. I would have been left that motherfucker. <laughs> I, got a kid, I got a kid. I got a couple more years. Yeah, I know. I know how you feel, though. Yeah, because I my, got my kids. Oh. And I never leave my kids. Yo, my, uh, I got a son that lives in Florida, though. He oh, yeah, what part? Jacksonville. JV. Oh, he up. Yeah, he up North Florida. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but we just bought him a house. Like, I mean, he just closed like a couple of days ago. Yes, um, congratulations, man. Congratulations. I, I was going to say, speaking of kids, I, I, when you were a kid, Wink, did you get in a lot of fights? Were you? Mm, I didn't get in a lot of. I got in a few fights, but not a lot. But I would fight, and I was so. You got to remember, listen. So I was before I came to Florida. I was really short. I when I was in the tenth grade, because I moved to Florida, going to eleventh grade. So as soon as I got out of the tenth grade, I went to high school in DC. So then my tenth, my tenth grade, after my tenth grade year, I was like four eleven. Damn. I, I was four eleven. So so I was four eleven. So then I moved to Florida that summer. And then I grew to like five six, I think over the summer. Then I grew to like five eleven. Five Damn. eleven and a half. Yeah, it was like crazy. I was just like so people didn't know who I was back home because they looked they used to little Winky. And then they see they like, Damn, that ain't Winky. He grew. And then they realized who I was and it was just like, wow. So I see a lot of my friends and I, I'm a lot taller than them. So it's just crazy. Well, yeah, that's a, yeah. Remind me, how did you get the name Winky? My grandmother gave it to me when I was a baby. She just, you know what I'm saying, I guess I was Winky. And I don't know if she just, she, my uncle's name was Weenie. So Weenie and Winky, he was two months older than me. So my uncle was two months older than me. Then my, I came, so it was Winky and Weenie. And we was like, Never apart, you know what I'm saying? He got killed down here in Florida. Yeah, yeah, we never was apart. So, you know what I'm saying? It was the Winky and Winnie everywhere you went, you know what I'm saying? Damn. Besides the construction company, you doing anything else? I mean, you in the gym a couple of days a week, what you got? Nah, 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 man. I, listen, uh, boxing took a, a lot of my life, man. I was professional, what, 21 years? So, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, you know, I need to get away from it. I, I every now and then I stop in the gym, say but like I said, Keith Thurman, you know, we in the same 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 gym. So I go see him sometime and talk with him and see some of the kids and, you know, see what they doing wrong with this and that. But I just right now, I just got one live do other things. Like I said, I got two grandkids, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm, I'm with my grandkids and I'm with my, my, my new girl, you know what I'm saying? I was I'm getting a divorce, so you know, just living life, man. Just time, sure. life short. You know what I'm saying. So, speaking of, oh my bad. Speak oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One more thing, I forgot. Yeah, I do got. I got my podcast. <laughs> so we doing that right now. I was just wondering. So I, I was just in Houston, uh, uh, doing doing getting some uh getting some content. You know, interviewing uh we interviewed Willie D uh from the Ghetto Boys. Uh, that's gonna be coming, yeah, yeah. But I got Scarface and them coming too. So we got Scarface. We got a few more people out there. We got to get. It was just this weekend. Some things happened that where we couldn't get everybody that we had on a, on our roster to to do. So we are gonna go back out there and get that done. Wow. Who, who is the dream? Who is the dream interview? The dream interview, M MJ. That's my man. So I like. To, I'm cool with MJ, but that's oh. my dream interview Michael to do. Dead, bro. Huh? Michael Jackson's dead. Nigga, Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> you said so, MJ. You think, MJ. You think MJ. But before that, you talked about singers and rappers. No, wow. but I'm not MJ. I'm talking about uh, Jordan, I mean, man. Jordan, Jordan, good dude, man. I play. You know, he got a golf course down here, private golf golf course down in uh, Florida. And me, my man Gary Sheffield, go down there and play with him. Play down there, and you know, he Jordan, a great dude, just to. Just to get some wisdom from someone who 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 was just like an icon in in, in the world, not just in this sport, but just everybody know uh, Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? So that's just crazy, you know. So to be able to interview him, that's my that's my uh, number one interview. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think it would. Just got to catch him at the right time. I got to get on the golf course with him and let him know. Look, if I beat you, you got to do an interview. Oh, <laughs> that's smart because he's mad competitive. Yeah. Yeah, mad, mad competitive, mad. Um, wow, that's crazy. Um, <clears throat> so sp speaking of of Keith Thurman, you know he's fighting soon. Who do you like? Like, wh who's your top three pound for pound fighters right now? Oh, 
top three. Okay, number and number one. Not not saying in in this order, but I got three. My top three right now. I'm gonna say, my a lot of people don't like David Benavidez. I love that. That kid is a hell of a fighter. People say what they want about uh, Canelo. All Canelo, great fight. Don't get me wrong. I love Canelo. What he did, this and that. But he knew how to pick the fights. He knew to stay away from that dude. That dude is dangerous for anybody. Tall, big, and hit hard. Uh, I like. I like. Uh, Terrence Crawford and uh and uh and uh Earl Spence right now. Then you got Lord. You can't just say three. It's a lot of them. Then you got Lord. Um, well. Low, low, uh, uh, tank, tank, tank proving them wrong. Every time you think tank gonna do the tank proving them wrong, so tank doing his thing. But the future of boxing to me is gonna be Shakur Stevens or and little Devin Haney. So, there was a bad little dude. People can say what they want. I love Devin Haney, man. The kid, hard worker, he put in the work. Him and his dad and them, and uh, I, I want to congratulate them on their win, man. And you know, I like them. I like both him and his dad. I love the way they doing their thing, man. Keep it up. Shakur Stevens, a bad little dude. My man, my man, Tony O'Leary got him out out of the Olympics, and they co-signed him with Bob Irm. So I knew little Shakur in the Olympics. I mean, before the Olympics, I knew him when he was in the trial. So he was like, man, this kid gonna be great. And then I saw it, man. Shakur just dangerous. Yeah, he is. Did, did did you guys, Jeremy? You too. This is. Did you see Ed, Edgar Berlanga bite? That? I didn't see the fight. I didn't see that fight. I, ain't... I didn't did, see that fight. Did you guys hear about it? Yeah, I heard about it, but I ain't see the fight. You know what I'm saying? Dude, dude is good puncher. Dude, he a good puncher, but one, he got that Mike Tyson syndrome. So once a few people go to distance with him, and once he get hurt. It, people ain't gonna be scared of him no more. I think he's a great puncher, but you know, a lot of it be when you, you know, like Tyson. When people, they if Tyson hits you with a good one, they usually fall out. Okay, I'm gonna fall out before I get knocked out. Mike had a great punch. Don't get me wrong, but once Buster Douglas stood up to him, it kind of like changed. Or oh, okay, if Buster could take it, I could take it. Let me try to take it. Now you got to fight. But you know, Mike is a hell. Of, I mean, and that's another dude I, I, I really love, man. Mike. Is the, I love his honesty. I love who he is, man. He just Mike, and I, he the realness of him. people say he crazy. He just he just real, man. I, I man, I I love Mike. Mike Mike a bad man. I agree, man. Um, I agree. What do you think about um, <clears throat> what do you think about Bivol and Canelo if they rematch? You think you'll have? have same? I like I like Bivol. I like Bivol. Now what's the other better be? Now better be is a puncher. That dude, man, that little dude got some hard little hands, but I want to see him and Bavar. That would be a good fight. And, uh, you know, the, the the guy, the Cuban dude, uh, Mar David Morrell, is that it? I don't know. Oh, he's a, he's a light heavy or super metal? I forget. He's a yeah, nice. monster. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Kyrie, where your, where your charge? You got, you, got, look, you got the iPhone, right? Let me see your charge. You got bring your plug because my phone about to go dead. Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Who's, who are your... <laughs> hush. Hush. What? Temper oh, no. Who are your top three greatest fighters of all time, in your opinion, of all time? All time. And I'm not no no specific order. Like I said, I just can't pick three. I love boxing. So, you know, plug it up. I, just want, I love... Uh, hold on. Let me take this off. Can y'all hear me? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I love... Thank you, Doc. I love, uh, I love, and I'm gonna give you about ten just because Good. I love boxing. You know, Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, Pernell Whitaker, Roy Jones. Woo! Uh, uh, oh, Floyd. I love Floyd. Floyd. You know, people. You know, I think Floyd is a hell of a fighter, man. Point blank. Uh, do I think he's the greatest? That might, you know, that's for other people to judge. That's not for me to judge. But I think he's a hell of a fighter, and I never try to take nothing away from his skill and what he did in boxing. So I give him his props. Uh, uh, Lord, uh, let me see. Sugar Ray Robinson. Uh, Tommy Hearns was a bad man. You, you know, you can't you can't take away. He got knocked, but Tommy Hearns gave you some good inside fights, man. Yeah. And you know, I don't know. It's probably some more, but that's. Yeah, I could just run them off my head just like that. Great list. That's a great. Uh, that's a great you, list. 
What do you think would have happened if you fought Floyd at 47? I don't know, man. I can't say. I, listen, I, at that time, when I, when I was at 154, remember, I never lost my championship belts. I never lost 54. I was undisputed, and I gave it up to go be undisputed middleweight at the same time, which I should have been. They cheated against Jermaine. So I would have been undisputed middleweight and undisputed junior middleweight at the same time. So uh, I never lost my belts. And at 54, I felt so much bigger than the 54 pounders. I felt so much stronger. And I don't, I don't know, you know, it, it would have been a good fight. I know Floyd would have came in, did what he did, did his little shoulder roll box move. I would have put pressure on him. And it was just going to be a wheel, a, a war of wheels. And we both had that wheel at that time. See, he was fighting somebody who didn't want to lose, and, and he didn't want to lose. So we was going to go at it. it was, I wasn't going I wasn't going to lay down. So, And I know he wasn't going to lay down. And it it would have been a great fight. I wish it would have happened. But like I said, you know, things happen the way they happen. Is is that the one fight that you wish you would have had, or is there somebody else? No, no, no. I, I never, I never wanted to fight Floyd. We was cool. But I never wanted to fight Floyd. It was just like I don't even know how that came when somebody mentioned that I, I was supposed to fight for. I'm like, I never heard nothing about it. I'm like, you know, but 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 the fight that I wish would have happened never happened was Oscar De La Hoya. You know, I beat everybody he lost to, and then he still will not fight me. I'm, I'm undisputed. Why is you fighting Manny Pacquiao? I told him. I went. I'm like, why are you fighting Manny Pacquiao? You, I'm undisputed. Me, I, you can get the belt. We can go at it. Wow, you know, fight me. It was just, it was just didn't make sense to me. And then he wound up getting knocked out. See, but you know, Oscar was a gatekeeper. So everybody that Oscar fought and lost to, that's when they started making real money. Shane, yeah. Del, uh, Shane, Floyd, and Pacquiao. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. Think Oscar brought dollars to the to the to the, to the fight. That's for sure. Of, of course, and everybody he lost to. That's when they start making crazy money. Just think about it. None of them were making crazy money. Floyd was the only one making good money. Floyd was making good money before him, but after him, that's when he really started making money. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Wow. Um, that would have been a good fight, though. Uh, there's so many guys that you would have given trouble to. You know what I mean? Because of your style, obviously. So many. Yeah, and I can, like I said, I can box. So that's what, that's another thing. People just got so used to me just standing there. It was just easier to stand there. But if I needed to, I can box. I can get back outside, jab, stick and move, slip. It was just that. It was easy to just stay there and pick the shots off and then come back. Uh, it makes, makes sense. So you, you, you have put together a pretty good life for yourself. Yeah. You, um, you're in Florida. You're doing things. You got have, you have kids. You got grandkids, man. I, I mean, what else could you ask for? That's what I'm saying, man. Look, our health. Like I tell people all the time, man, we got to stay healthy, man. I started gaining some weight. I was like, man, I got to get this weight off me because, you know, I, I we used, we took our whole life and, and stayed in shape, you know what I'm saying, and stayed healthy. And, you know, I never drink. I never smoke. So, you know, that ain't an issue. But I love to eat. I love sweets. I love, you know, just eat, just doing shit. So, and then by not working out, I put on the weight. So now I'm getting the weight back off and then just, you know, just enjoy life. I always love to travel. I always did stuff with the fam, you know, so I want to continue doing that and just, just, just enjoy, you know, make sure life good for my kids and grandkids. Yeah, I feel, I'm in the same way, man. We know, we appreciate you coming in and spending 45 minutes with us, man. I've known <laughs> you my whole life, bro, so. <laughs> my man, hey, you're a bad boy, man. I was just like, I tell a lot of motherfuckers, man. I used to say you knock out a lot of niggas in now, which is boy. You might got more amateur knockouts than motherfuckers got professional knockouts. How many people you knocked out in amateur? Ninety percent. What was your record? He had three hundred fights. I told you. I, listen, listen. I only saw I only saw the ones from from eight, late eighty eight to to ninety. So one think, one year he knocked out a lot of motherfuckers. I said, boy, this dude crazy, man. <laughs> I had mad respect for you, dog. You did your thing, man. Yeah, and so did you. So I, I was fan of you. I, I wanted to hold my hand like that. My dad wouldn't let me. He said, don't do that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he does it. And he looked at him. <laughs> yeah, it was just different. It was just something that happened, man. I, I, that boxing, when I was boxing, they HBO kept telling me, because cause I, now I'm trying to get on HBO, they kept saying, listen, we can't give you no fight because it's not interesting because you're just making the fight. It's one-sided. You know, I was winning all around like Floyd was doing. I'm winning all around. But, you know, it's not exciting. Nice. I'm like, what you mean? That's what we're supposed to do, win. <laughs> I got to make it exciting. So, you know, then Vargas fight came, and it was just 
his talking and all that, and that just pushed me to that to that whole style just just then. But like I said, I, I'm cool with Vargas too. At, at one time, I didn't like boxing. That's that's what we as fighters we got to stop doing, blaming the fighter, the other fighter for something that the judges did. You know what I'm saying? I, I for a long time I didn't like Vargas because. You know what I'm saying? They cheated me. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't his fault. You know what I'm saying? He he came in for this fight, and, and the people they did what they had to do. And I and I I, I as I, as I got older, I realized that, and I you know I appreciated you know what I'm saying being able to get in the ring with him. And uh, like I said, we cool now. And I see him. I'm happy for him and his kids. He got some fighters, so yeah. you know what I'm saying. Best of luck to him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Well, we appreciate your time, Wink. I know you're hey, my man. Good to see All you. Right. All right, man. All right, fellas. All right.